So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Keith Crouch, who uh, is going to give us the update from Burgess. Keith, please. Thank you, Sean. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Keith Crouch. I'm an Associate Director of Product Management at Burgess, where I focus on the Burgess Managed data sets, but I have a particular focus on the Burgess Manager universe. Uh, for those who might be less familiar with Burgess, we are a leading provider of analytics and data solutions for global investors of private capital. And today I'm going to give you a quick update on our research quality benchmarking data set, which we call the Burgess Manager Universe. And this is the data set that we proudly make available to PERC in order to support all of your research. Now at a top level, all of our data sets continue to see pretty significant growth. Excitingly, uh, funds broke through 10,000 earlier this year. And in our funds universe, still half the growth continues to be historical funds. Now, we also make underlying investment holdings available. Now, across the board, all of these data sets have grown by more than 10% in the past year. And so, broadly speaking, we have nearly 175,000 holdings in this data set now. Within that 175,000, we have the performance part of the data set, which is over 85,000 constituents. And so that one itself is kind of well on its way to, to reaching the 100,000 milestone. Now you'll notice a row at the bottom of this table here, which is a count that we don't normally show. And it says holdings with full history. So this is, at least internally to Burgess, the data set that we, we have, where we have complete since inception cash flows and valuations for these underlying investment holdings. Now, while it's smaller on account basis, uh, these holdings actually do represent the full set of investments for thousands of funds and a very large portion above the total invested capital and valuation. So we are working towards making uh, this part of the data set available to you. But at a high level, these are, these are the data sets. So let us get into some enhancements that we've brought to the researcher toolkit over the past year. So as I referenced earlier, we exceeded 10,000 funds in the data set. But additionally, we added a new development attribute. So this is another way of grouping and thinking about um, kind of a ge geographic classification. And this is according to the MSCI classifications. So funds are assigned a value of developed merging frontier. Now, additionally, for the funds, uh, we built out the subscription line of credit histories. These are fund-level debt facilities which are used to make investments without drawing down LP capital. They've become much more common in recent quarters, and we had made a, a limited amount of that data available a year or two ago, but we have built out the full history of those facilities within our data set. Additionally, we had some improvements in the holdings world. So we uh, built out the initial investment date and exit date completeness so that that data set hadn't been 100% complete at the time. So now you can better understand both the holding periods of the underlying investment holdings, but even just things like the vintage of a holding and how it may compare to the fund vintage of, or the, the funds vintage, rather. And of course, uh, the holdings themselves, as I referenced before, have, have seen some uh, meaningful growth throughout the year. Now, these, the highlights I just walked through are really just a, a set of incremental improvements, and there really is going to be a lot coming in the near future that you can be excited about. Now, before I get to some of that, I do want to highlight this bring your own data uh, kind of feature again. Now, you've probably seen this recently, but it's, it's really worth bearing in mind. So we now make a list available to academics of all the funds which are known to Burgess across all of our data sets. And so to the extent that there is some set of data that you have um, uh, brought from the outside and you would like to incorporate it into your research, this is something that this list can help facilitate. So you can kind of bear that in mind as you're, as you're thinking of and working on research projects. But let's get into what's next now, because I know that's why most of you are listening to me right now. So here are some forthcoming enhancements. I want to give you kind of a real high level roadmap of what you can expect. Um, going to walk through this pretty quickly, but we've broken it roughly into two buckets. So it's those items that we expect to make available over the next year. And then there are also some other items which are still goals of ours, but we're, it's something with a less defined timeline. So we're working towards it, but we can't quite commit to when it will be available. So what's coming over the next year? At the manager level, 
we have incorporated the PRI signatory status into our data set. So this is a UN sponsored uh, kind of ESG related initiative, encourage you to learn more, but uh, you'll be able to group funds and managers by whether they have signed onto those accords and when they signed them. At the funds level, we've introduced some milestone dates. Um, so this is like first close and final close and some dates from key uh, life cycle events within the fund that you can help facilitate further research. Now in the holdings world, and remember these are the underlying investment holdings of funds, uh, we'll be bringing a few things to you over the next year. Uh, today that data set includes just the TDPI or the investment multiple for performance measurement, but we're gonna be adding gross IRR uh, this year. Additionally, some new characteristics are gonna be coming your way. So we are introducing exit type. So was this holding exited through a strategic sale or a financial sale or an IPO? Uh, this data set is gonna be focused on the buyout funds initially, but we will eventually build it out to the other areas of the data set. Now, two more big ticket items. Uh, the first of which is security level data for debt funds. So within debt funds, they often make multiple different loans to the same companies and properties. And we are in the process of capturing the underlying terms and conditions data for these investments. Uh, and then finally here, linking holdings back to the respective funds. Uh, this has been an area of interest, I know, from the academic community. Uh, we're gonna be making this available. Again, I think here we will focus on buyout funds initially and then expand it to other areas. And this will really allow you to do a lot more grouping and filtering and analysis between potentially the, the two different levels of the data set. And then entities. So this is a company, a property, and so on within our data set. So we'll be making property type available, multifamily, industrial, you can better understand real estate investments. And then we also have incorporated six. So the SICS, Sustainable Industry Classification System into our data set. Uh, this is a SASB uh, kind of backed classification scheme. I encourage you to learn more separately, but this will be coming into the uh, universe data set in the near future. And then finally, some basic fundamentals information. Be able to better understand, is this holding profitable? What is the size of it? What is potentially the leverage of it? and different aspects like that. So mindful of time, but let me at least quick touch upon. So what items are further out? So in the manager's world, we wanna build some better profiles, headquarters and potentially other fields. In the funds world, uh, infrastructure really is an area of interest amongst both our clients and the academic community. So we're looking to revisit the classifications for those funds over the next year. And then. Uh, uh, holdings, so cash flow history. So as I referenced earlier in the presentation, this is something we are actively working towards providing. Um, as I think many of you know, our focus here on Burgess with the research quality data set is making sure that it is a complete representative history for a very large set of data. So we are focused on, on building this out and delivering it to you in the near future. And finally, for entities, we do want to build out our profiles along a few different dimensions. So this ranges from simple things like year founded to more complex data points, like identifying those dimensions which are important for, for ESG-focused research. So at a high level, here are some things that are going to be coming to you over the next year and some things that we're going to be working on in the longer term. But before I leave you, there is, of course, the most important slide coming up next, and that is the proposal or the deadline for proposals. So January 31st, 2021 is the next proposal for submitting your research. So with that, I come to the end of the BIRS update and I will hand it back over to Sean. Terrific. Uh, that's terrific, Keith. We really appreciate it. It's always uh, you know, uh, a point where folks are really anxious to hear what new data is available for the work that we can do. And it's been tremendous, uh, everything that we've been able to uh, utilize and partner with Burgess on. So thank you so much for that. We're looking forward to, we're looking forward to seeing those new outputs this year. It's gonna be terrific.